the Motorhome Matt podcast, brought to you with ThatLeisureShop.com. With me, Keith Gooden, and with Matt Sims, our expert. What he doesn't know isn't worth knowing about when it comes to motorhomes. Thanks for adding that. And caravans. Phew. <laughs> Dress sense, completely different. <laughs> What's wrong? <laughs> that, uh, it's nothing. Uh, uh, payload. Now, this is a complicated subject, and we have been discussing this before we started recording, and it's difficult to make simple. But here's the man that can make anything simple. It's Matt Sibs. Here we go. How do we make payloads simple for motorhomers and caravanners? The first thing to understand is the maximum weight that your vehicle is allowed to be, okay? With all your stuff in, your clothes, shoes, baked bean tins, beer cans, gin, all of that stuff, the wife, (laughs) there's a maximum weight that the vehicle can weigh. Now, that will be on the slam panel under the bonnet. Okay, so there's a number there, which is typically 3,500. Okay, so three and a half tonnes, that's the maximum weight. If you take all that stuff out, okay, you've still got stuff left in the motorhome. You've got its carpets, all its furniture, the motorhome itself. The difference between the two is your payload. Okay, now people, where this goes wrong is when people start adding a, uh, a TV aerial, a satellite dish, a big awning to the side of it, you know, the sun canopy down the side, a bike rack, and all this stuff is inherent weight that you can't take off. So that is all going to impact the net weight of the vehicle, and that's therefore going to reduce your payload. You're getting it closer to the maximum vehicle weight. Now, that means you can't take as much beer. You possibly have to leave the wife behind. There's a thought. (laughs) If I called her the wife... (laughs) <laughs> I'd be the one left behind <laughs> yeah that's right I wouldn't blame her um, So, and this is the key is how much payload do people have how do you find it out well uh, this is a really good question you can read the brochures and they will give you a payload now that payload can be questioned and challenged a bit because does it include one or two gas bottles how much water did they account for when they gave you that figure was it full of diesel did it include an allocation for the driver there's lots of questions and then of course when you buy it you've gone and added all these accessories to it you've inc- you've increased that curb weight of the vehicle the only surefire way to know is to go and get it weighed now before you've bought it that's difficult so you have to kind of trust the brochure but there are questions that you would be within your rights to ask about that weight in the brochure. What does it include? Even an extra cut of paint has an impact on weight. So if you've gone for a colour-coded van, that's going to have several kilos of impact on weight of the vehicle. So the payload is the difference between that curb weight and the maximum weight the vehicle can carry. If you lift the bonnet and look at the plate under the bonnet, there's a silver plate uh, usually riveted on, And it will say axle one, that's how much weight that axle can carry, the front axle. Axle two, normally the rear axle, how much weight that can carry. Add the two together and that's the gross vehicle weight. It's referred to as lots of things, the MTPLM, the maximum technically permissible laden mass. That's what that means. Did you know that? I didn't. No. I didn't know that. No. Oh, yeah. It's a no. good pub quiz question. It is a very good one. <laughs> Not for the pubs you go to. <laughs> so that's the maximum weight that you can carry. And it's normally three and a half tonnes. It's also, there's a driving licence thing here. So, you know, without going into deep detail on that, if you pass your test after 1997, January 97, you can't drive more than three and a half tonnes. Uh, and, and the problem with payloads at the moment is they're getting squeezed. They're getting smaller and smaller. And it's possible to buy a brand new motorhome which has a completely unrealistic payload. It, you know, you get in it as the driver and you, you put your partner in it and you put some luggage in it and that's it. You've hit the payload. You've hit the maximum weight. That's very, very possible. And the, the reason that's happening is motorhome chassis are getting heavier. So there's more and more technology on them. The engines are getting bigger or heavier. There's more airbags, power steering, sat-nav. All these things carry weight. And then you add an aircon unit to the roof or a television to it, maybe a television in in the bedroom as well. Put an awning on the side, as I say. This all increases that base weight of the vehicle. So it's understanding what is my payload and then making sure the weight of that stuff doesn't exceed the maximum weight. Really important. So how do I weigh my motorhome or my caravan? The only real way to do that is to go and take it to a weigh bridge. Now, we have an animal feed place not far from here, 
and they have a weigh bridge. They weigh all their lorries on the way out to make sure they're not overweight and they've not exceeded their payloads. And it's a fiver, it's five pounds, and, and they'll weigh you and write it on a receipt for you. So we take our motorhomes and we sell horse boxes as well. We take them there when they arrive and we weigh them with a quarter of a tank of fuel and we choose to weigh them with no driver. So we know what the net weight of the vehicle is. And they've got half a tank of water and there's there's a list of things we put in, make sure the gas is in there, all the stuff you have to have is in there. We weigh them and then we know the maximum weight of the vehicle and that's the payload. So we can advise people, you've got this much weight. It could be 300 kilos, it could be five or 600 kilograms and that's how much weight you can take with you. So what do I do? Do So I weigh it for the first time with nothing in it. I take it home, I put all the stuff in it and do I take it back and weigh it again? Is that the way it works? Uh, you could do, yeah. And that would be a very informed way of knowing, are you within the boundary? You know, have I got to leave some shoes and some beer at home? Uh, and, and, you know, being overweight has implications. You are p- potentially uninsured because your insurer has insured it at if it's a three and a half ton vehicle, that's what they've insured it for. There are other issues as well. Is the motorhome chassis actually capable of stopping if it's overweight? And it's bear in mind, it's possible to put three, 400 kilos too much in a motorhome. If you're a family of six, you know, six people, if you're six adults, you're going to very, very easily and quickly potentially overload a motorhome. So the braking distance can be increased. The handling on corners will be impacted and you're technically uninsured and driving illegally. So it's really important that you are aware of your payload. But listen, I've got my motorhome. I've banged, as you say, the two kids in the back. Uh, The missus is with me and I'm in there. We've packed everything we need and I'm going to drive down the road. Nobody's going to stop me, are they? Well, I've been motorhoming for 20 seven years or something like that and I've never been stopped um I there are I've, I've read stories of people being stopped and being weighed um but I've never met anyone who's actually been stopped to be weighed and it's a mute point really uh, you know it's more about your safety than it is being stopped I mean you know being caught is one thing but the risk is that is the safety of you and your family. Because as you say, the chassis might not be capable yeah. of, of behaving in the way it's been advertised. Uh, the tyre pressures might need adjustment. Exactly, yeah, exactly. And and braking distances will increase, obviously, the heavier you are. So it's, it's yeah, not being caught is one thing. Um, it's possible you could be stopped and be weighed. And the police do pull motorhomes over and caravans over mm. and they check their loading. Uh, and check their safety. There's a, there's a way bridge um, at the um, Bath Junction on the M4. There is, which yeah, is very Vosal. close, and they're always pulling uh, people over there. Yeah, I mean, it's normally lorries that are targeted mm-hmm. and vans. Mm-hmm. And obviously, if you look overweight, you're you're asking for trouble, then, aren't you? I mean, if you're driving down with, you know, the rear axle is up underneath the wings, mm-hmm. under the wheel arches, then you know, obviously, you're overweight, um, mm-hmm. and that will attract the attention of any highways officer or police officer. So, but it's as I say, it's not about getting caught. It's about safety and being aware um, and just being very mindful of you know the fact that you are roadworthy. Uh, yeah, and that leisureshop.com is sponsoring this Motorhome Map podcast. And I suppose that's why when you look around the shop or you look online, why uh, you sell so many light items, why they're purposely designed to be... Um, uh, to weigh much less than uh, something that you might buy in the supermarket, which does the same job. It's all about making sure that the payload isn't exceeded so your vehicle performs in the way that you expect it to. It does, yeah, absolutely. And and that's really important. I mean, you know, taking the, the wooden furniture from the patio is probably not the best idea, uh, but rather choosing lightweight furniture that's designed to be used in this way is 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 really important. One of the one of the things that's really scary is there's a new technology called weight in motion cameras. This is this is amazing. So these cameras will actually know how heavy you are whilst you're travelling. And there are said to be around 50 of them in the mot- on the motorway networks. Um, and they have been used outside this is worrying outside of motorhome shows. So the outdoor shows uh, will feature hundreds, if not thousands, of motorhomes, camper vans, all leaving the show. And the authority will rig up one of these cameras, which has the capability of having an idea how heavy that vehicle is whilst it's moving. And then the police will pull you over. So the authorities are on to this, and they know that motorhomes are often 
overweight. It's a, it's a sad reality. And there's an on-the-spot fine of £300 uh, if you're a full foul of the rules. And they'll expect you to bring it down to weight by the side of the road. Well, they'll force you to stop your journey and, yeah, yeah. tip the beer in the drain. Yeah. Or leave the missus on the, in the lay-by. See, what gets me about this is that... It, you know, we've got our motor home and we've loaded it up and, and we think, you know, that we have got the right weight in there. It's not too heavy, but it's that calculation. It's actually getting the accurate figure, which is bamboozling me. As you say, you go to the weigh bridge and then you work out the payload. It's quite complicated, isn't it? It's not just me being stupid, is it? Uh, <laughs> it can seem complicated. It's easier with a, with a sticker in front of us. The sticker says axle one axle two and then another and, and and then some other numbers you add those numbers together basically and that will give you the the maximum weight the vehicle can be the other number that's on there is how much it can be when it's towing something so it, say you've got loads of weight you have to carry then you could consider putting it in a trailer because there's a a, a train weight that a vehicle can be so a motor might be able to carry an extra two thousand kilograms and be a train weight of five and a half tons but two thousand of that or two tons of that are behind it being towed. So there are lots of numbers, and you can easily Google the plate and and get the explanation as to what your numbers mean. Um, or if not, you know, just go and ask a garage to tell you, uh, or send us a pic of it, and I'll explain it for you. Um, so, how do you fix your payload? Well, if you're overweight, then as I say, consider a trailer. That's an option. Certainly, I've got friends who tow motorbikes. And they don't put them on the back, obviously. They, they tow them in a trailer. Lots of people tow a car. Um, and that's either being towed on, on the ground or they put it on a trailer, uh, which is you know far more legal on the continent. Um, and if you've got a box trailer, you can fill that with all sorts of stuff. Um, but be in my, bear in mind the total maximum train weight that the vehicle can be. Uh, but that's a great way of, of, of moving stuff out of the motorhome and into a trailer and, and taking it with you. Have a clear out as well. You know, bear in mind if you're if you're going to take a full tank of water, uh, that that could be a hundred liters. That's a hundred kilos. Yeah, water does weigh an extraordinary amount, doesn't well, it's it? A kilo a liter. Yeah. So if if you've got a hundred and twenty liter tank, it's hundred and twenty kilos if it's full. So is, the you, is there a recommendation to bring just a small amount of water with you and then fill when you get to fill the when you get there if you can fill at the campsite. Same with wastewater. You know, why would you carry that down the road? It's a total waste of payload. So empty it at the campsite before you leave. You know, if there's a waste drain opportunity there, then empty it into that drain. Um, and immediately, you know, potentially that's 90 kilograms. It depends on the size of the waste tank. But there's a huge amount of weight there, gone. Um, and you mentioned before about you weigh for your business, uh, for that leisure shop and uh, uh, the motorhome business that you run. Uh, you said that you uh, w go to the weigh um, bridge uh, with a quarter of a tank of fuel. Is that something you recommend that people don't fill up completely when they're leaving home and maybe stop on the way? Or Well, the, the reason we do a quarter of a tank of fuel, um, we do that with the horse boxes because most people driving a horse box never have a full tank of fuel. They can't afford it. Um, <laughs> thought the horse has taken all the money. Uh, and, you know, in my experience, most of them are a quarter full. Um, with a motorhome, our higher fleet, they go out with a full tank of fuel. So they get weighed with a full tank of fuel. I should correct that. Um, so that, you know, that's really important to know. It's down to you. If, you know, how, do you, how you fill your tank is up to you and, and be mindful of that when you get it weighed. Yep, so look it up online. You can ask Motorhome Matt Sims, whether you're coming to the NEC, or uh, uh, you can get in touch with us and we'll give you some more details uh, about that in a few minutes' time. So anything else we need to know then, Matt? Well, you can increase the payload. So say you've, you know, you've got all this stuff you want to carry and take and you think, oh, I'm 100 kilos over, I can't get rid of anything. You can up-plate the motorhome. This is a process called up-plating. Now, that will depend on the vehicle chassis and what it's capable of going to. Often a chassis that's rated at 3.5 tonnes, that's done because of the driving licence restriction. It will often be able to go up to 3,650, giving you an extra 150 kilograms of payload. Now, to be able to drive it, you have to have a C1 licence. That's the key. And and what its capability to be up-plated is led by a number of things. Tyre size, uh, so the type of tyres, that they can be changed, of course. Wheel size is a factor too. Suspension and brakes. And then, of course, the capability of the chassis. Peugeot and Citroen make it very easy to know whether it can be up-plated. The VIN number, 
So that's the little number at the bottom of the windscreen where the tax disc used to go. Vehicle identification number. That's the one. Mm-hmm. So that on a Peugeot and Citroen, you can tell what it will go to from the coding in there. Fiat make it much harder. You actually have to get the vehicle inspected. And there are a number of companies that will, will do this for you. SV Tech are one. And you give them the VIN number and they will be able to tell you what you can plate it to. Or you can get it inspected uh, and in a VOSA inspection place and they will tell you what it can be uplated to. Now, it might involve changing the tyres. It certainly might involve adding airbags to the rear suspension because the rear suspension will get squashed. So the airbags just help keep the body up. Um, and they will advise you what weight you can go to. Uh, and then you get a new plate which you buy from a specialist supplier, and that will be stuck on that what's called the slam panel under the bonnet, above the grille. You must keep the old one there because you need to be able to show the history, uh, but that new plate will be the new weight loading of the vehicle. Now, if you upplate the vehicle, you need to check your driving licence that so you can drive it. Your road tax, oddly, is going to get cheaper because there's a different band for higher vehicles, but tolls on the continent will go up because... Higher plated vehicles carry a higher fee. So that's it. all this stuff is worth considering. And it's definitely worth spending some time, you know, deep diving into this on Google um, to get the, all the facts and all the information before you do it. Yeah, get informed. That's the key. It is a complicated subject. We've tried to simplify it for you. But if it, in any doubt, as Matt says, deep dive, Google it or... You can ask Matt himself. Uh, yeah. How do people go about doing so they that? So can, they can, you can message us directly. Go to our website, motorhomemat.co.uk forward slash ask Matt. You can record your question there, which we would love because we can include that in the podcast. It's great fun to be able to be able to do that. Or you, there's a form. You just put your name, uh, tell us where you're from and put the question in and it will email it to us and we'll come back to you uh, directly or in the podcast. So that is the Motor Home Matt podcast. We've been uh, talking today about your payload. Like we say, get informed. That's the key. But don't be frightened. And uh, if you want to ask Matt any question about it, he's just giving you uh, the details. Uh, where else can people uh, catch up with Motor Home Matt, the podcast and uh, uh, that leisure shop? You'll podcast. find us on social media, on Facebook, Motor Home Matt, Instagram, motorhomemat.co.uk and on YouTube. If you're watching us on YouTube, welcome. But make sure if you're on YouTube, you hit subscribe and hit that little bell. And then the gods of YouTube can tell you when we release a new episode.